I don't know. It's fun. It's there. So here we are, traveling together during Lent. And there is one symbol and one symbol alone that represents to me what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Now I think the Catholic Church, they've got it right. They have left Jesus nailed to a cross and all of the horrors that are associated with it. There's symbolism there. I don't know. Protestant Church, on the other hand, has sanitized it. They've taken away the symbolism. They left it barren so that it's not cherished by so many. In fact, walk down any street and you will see crosses everywhere around people's necks, on their nose, in their ear, the tattoos that people wear. I'm going to tell you that most of those people are not devout followers of Christ. They've turned our symbolism into something that is meaningful for them. Instead, though, I think our crosses should be splinters of wood that have been smoothed over time as they have been rubbed through prayer as we have meditated on God's Word. Our author today, George, uh, Reverend George Bernard, he wrote The Old Rugged Cross, and he was an evangelist that crisscrossed the Midwest into New York State, but mostly in his home state of Michigan. Now, there came a point in his ministry that he really wanted to understand what the cross really meant, and so Listen to his own words. He said, I was praying for a full understanding of the cross and its plan in Christianity. I read and studied and prayed. I saw Christ and the cross inseparably. The Christ of the cross became more than a symbol. The scene pictured a method, outlined a process, and revealed the consummation of a spiritual experience. It was like seeing John 3.16 leave the printed page, take form, and act out the meaning of redemption. While watching this scene with my mind's eye, the theme of the song came to me, and with it, the melody, but only the words of the theme, the old rugged cross came. And then an inner voice came and said, wait. Let us take time to pause a little bit here as well. During this Lenten season, let us begin to be reminded that the cross is something more than to be worn around the neck. The sight of a rough-hewn cross should cause us to tremble to know that in so many times we have lived out of sync with what was truly the most important purpose. The Son of God and man hung there by choice to save each and every one of us from our own wrongdoings, from our own bad behavior. It was the penalty for our actions. The old rugged cross puts life into perspective. Daily, we are searching selfishly for our own gain. But seeing the cross, we desire to count them as a loss. What had charmed us most, we now see as a willing sacrifice. Now, there was so much more on what transpired to inspire Reverend Bernard in sitting down to write this beloved hymn. His spiritual walk began after his curiosity was piqued when he was young. He heard about the Salvation Army having meetings in the town. He walked five miles to attend. Reverend Bernard, then a young boy, responded, to the speaker's invitation and committed his life to Jesus Christ there. This experience altered his life so much that later he and his wife served for nine years in the Salvation Army. He left them in 1907 to become an independent evangelist. Later he was ordained within the Methodist Episcopal denomination, our church. And so the old rugged cross just didn't tumble out of George's brain, but grew out of several different somewhat related events. 
1912, he was preaching throughout the Midwest, and when one night several teenagers rattled him, as he uh, was preaching, they incessantly heckled him during the service, and over the next year, Reverend George Bernard continued to be troubled by their disregard for the gospel. After his soul-trying experience, he was prompted to find answers for these youth taunts. So he went back to that special study of Christ on the cross and God's plan for redemption, and he began to reflect on Paul's reference to being part of the fellowship of Christ's suffering. When asked about all of this, he recalled, I seem to have a vision. I saw the Christ and the cross inseparable. Now, like I said, he was told to wait. And so now George, after this writer's block, after having the first verse, he set it down. But he continued to travel in his evangelistic ministries, and he went to New York. His many different experiences during those meetings, he began to, to break down the barriers in his mind. And so when he returned back to Michigan for further work, the floodgates were opened, and he was able then to complete the poem and add the music that he had already crafted. So let's listen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and the best for a world of sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I'll cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God has left glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. In the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine, such a wonderful beauty I see. For t'was on that old rugged cross, Jesus suffered and died to pardon and to sanctify me. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he called me some day to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. Side note, the first time this was ever sung was in a, a Methodist Episcopal church in a place called Pokagon, Michigan. So what do these songs have when they speak from a personal? What are they doing for us? They're drawing us into them as we sing about these experiences. We are now drawn to see this old rugged cross that it can only be seen with Christ. It's not to be separated. It's not to be to be pulled apart, to be sanitized as the world has done it. We need to look on the cross with all of his horrors. Because it means something to us. Jesus had to pay the penalty of our sin. He had to pay the price. He took the penalty. Some will say, well, Jesus was, was God. And God is, is capable of anything. And that's, that's true. But we have to understand that Jesus humbled himself. He took on the flesh so he could feel what we would feel. When he was being beaten, when those whips hit him, when he was being punched, when those crowns of thorns went into his flesh and he was bleeding, he wasn't distant. He wasn't having an out-of-body experience. Jesus was there taking our sin into his body. Jesus was perfect, but he was taking 
on our sin in those moments. He was taking that penalty for us. So we don't have to go through that. Sometimes I think it's way too easy to become a Christian. We go to an altar or we kneel somewhere or we just simply cry out, I want you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. I lay myself down. I take up you to be my leader. I want to be forgiven for all of my sins. Please forgive me. That's all you have to do to become part of this. But then, as I said, you know, we lay our sins down and we take up the cross. That's part of what Jesus said we need to do. We need to, to become part of a fellowship. We need to come together to be partners with Christ to go into this world to share the good news. Let's pray. Lord, we are part of a fellowship. We come together. We have brothers and sisters in Christ and you, but we are also in fellowship with you. We're in fellowship with the angels. We're in fellowship with those that have come before us. We are in partnership with what you have done for us. Help us to recognize that we cannot separate you from the cross, but it is by what you did on the cross that saves us from ourselves. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We put this into your name. Amen. See you next time.